Hello my little buttons. Now no doubt you have seen the Pinterest um, pictures going around of the amazing constellation pumpkins. I will somehow put it in and show you. I'm going to do one. I've got two different pumpkins here, both from Hobbycraft. They are four pounds each. This one is papier mache and this one is plaster. They're both absolutely cracking. I'm going to do two different things with them. Uh, I think this project is going to take an amount of hours. What you need for this project? Glue. Glue. Pumpkin riot going on. Paint. Paint. More paint. And then really the most important, you know, thing, glitter. 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 More glitter. 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 And just in case, glitter. Let's get on with it. Two other things I forgot to mention you need. Masking tape and oh yeah, these everlasting candles, battery operated lights, because you really, really don't want to be putting live candles in these. You don't trust me with those sort of things. <laughs> Start with this one first. We're going to have to remove the burr. Well, you don't have to, but I want to because I don't like it. I'll hold it close. Hopefully it will show. You can just see there's like little bits that need to be trimmed out. Little rough bits. They can go. So you can use any real knife to do this. Obviously, for some reason, they trust me with sharp tools, even though I can't seem to operate this one. And all I'm going to do is put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to really, really gently take away that harsh line. See that? It just gives the edge, it just makes the edge nicer. I say you don't have to bother with this and when you're doing it on plaster you can use a really really fine grade sandpaper to do this and it will work just as well. I'm showing you on this one, this is taking me about 10 minutes to prepare. Um, because the procedure is both on the same, I'm going to show you what to do next. The blue stuff. Really doesn't matter what masking tape it is. but. You don't want one that's too cheap because you don't want it to leave behind loads of glue, particularly on like these plaster ones if you're not painting them and I'm not painting this one. Well, I am, but not fully. So now it's just a case of sealing the eyes over. And press down pretty hard around the edge because I don't want paint to seep through and come down the outside. Well, and you need to seal all of the face this way. But leave the back open. And I'll show you why in a minute. <laughs> Looking good. No, looks like some kind of crazy clown. Okay, from the inside. Can you see that in there? That's kind of cool, actually. Right, so that's where it's going for now. On to painting. What am I going to do? Um, I'm going to paint the inside in yellows, whites and oranges so that when the lights are in there and the light glows out, it will glow out with that orangey yellow tone like the inside of a pumpkin. That's the plan. The plaster one will really suck up paint. So in an effort to save paint, I'm just going to prime the inside with white. That's it, all over, just with white. I know that may sound ridiculous, but it will just help your coloured paints go further. And seeing as they're usually the more expensive ones, better to save yourself some money. You can be a bit slapdash about this. Just try and make sure that it all entirely gets covered. 
Now, the hole on the plaster one is pretty big, whereas the hole on the rear of the paper mache one is quite a bit smaller. So, on this one, I've been able to manage to paint this back wall um, through this hole, whereas on the other one, I'm going to have to remove the nose covering and paint through there. So keep hold of the nose covering though because you're going to need to put that back on for the next step. And then after the white will become the colours. Can you see that? Look, there, colours. Looks like I'm lining up for a Ruby Murray. Okay. Colours. It's going to be quite hard to show you this next bit in any great detail. But I've got a pot of orange, a very pastel orange. So I'm going to go in there and paint a smidgen of it. Hoping let me get that right. Yeah, you can just about see that. And then I'm going to go in the yellow pot. And then just next whip, paint yellow on. Just so they start to smudge together. Yep, really hard to show you that. And that's how I'm going to do it, mottled throughout the whole thing just so it changes the quality of the light when they're inside and flickering don't worry if you get a little bit on the outside on these plaster ones it's really easy but I've got a little bit there just wipe it off and then when it's dry dry a little bit of sandpaper off it comes and you're back to perfect that's going to take about 10 minutes to dry so I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to Jiffy up this one. These are going to be the colours for the inside of this one. Look at that, I've just made my skin tape colour. Yeah, you go me. Okay. I say that too much. Why do I keep saying that? I've finished the insides on both. I hope you can see that the difference in the colours. This one's going to be much harder to see because it's a much smaller gap but I'm not worried about the bit of paint on the outside on that one because it's going to be a much darker colour on the outside. No, nope, you really can't see it. Now the whole reason that I've done it that way is the next step is glitter is going to go all over the inside and when you put it onto a different colour background it will reflect out a different colour because it is just like the, the white glitters. Now if you want to see this effect really well go to Simply Nailological's channel. She does some amazing glitter videos on nails and stuff and you'll still see how you know the colour of glitter changes depending on what colour background it is. So when these have the lights in and they're flickering depending on what on where you are seeing it from you'll see different colours flickering out. That's the plan. In here so far is PVA glitter and a very, very fine dust, glitter dust called Violet Light. I'm going to add to it some Glamour Dust in crystal. You can see me needing some more uh, PVA at this way. That's a very fine white coloured one with a slight gold under sheen and here I have some more glamour dust and this is gold glitz. I'm only putting a very very small amount of the gold in because I really don't want it to overpower anything. This is actually a glue, it doesn't matter it's still in a PVA base. Come on now, little blotch. Oh dear. Oh, oh, come on now. That's unfair. Ooh. Sexy. Right. And to this, I'm going to add this. Now, I don't know what this is meant to be. Oh, some kind of angel bottle dust charm. I got it from the works. But it is amazing glitter and I've used it on quite a few projects. It has a real bluey pink green 
undertone to it. It's just phenomenal. It's pretty much translucent, so it just looks fantastic. Now, from the works also, I've got this little set. There's a couple in here that we're going for. I'm going to use some of the yellow because we used yellow on the inside, so it will just help bring that colour out a bit more. As you can see, I'm not using a lot. I'm going to use some of the white just because it's a different size and colour. Something's moving. I'm going to use just a little bit of this silver hologram because it's just astounding. Oh, that looks good. That's like all my deepest desires for a bath coming true. Then I am going to use some of this. Um, this is Hobby Graft, just pure white glitter, just to give it a pure white sheen. Extra sparkles. Right. Then we have, again from think this is the works glitter glue just a real nice one a real kind of iridescent stick a bit more of that in gloop boink Ugh, that's so pretty and then just this real amazing fine grade um glitter it's kind of flaky glitter they call it so it's got all different sizes predominantly silver but because the rest of it's white you can take a little bit of it get out get out Aye. it's also a reason why i didn't add much from the little silver bottle knowing that this puppy is going in right so i think and that is it on the glitter front. I'm going to use this whole pot on the inside. I want it super glittery. Get the pumpkin. Get brush. Get paint. Inhale. That's it. And what I suggest you do is put on a good movie. I've got Affinity War on. And continue. And it's now time to mix the glitter for the blue one. So, same procedure as before. And because it's darker, I'm going to use an array of different colours, but I'm still going to keep a lot of the pinks and purples in there. So we're going to start off with some of this. I do love this. This is the Violet Flake. I'm going to put a good dose of this Violet White Flake in as well, because that is the one that is like the green and the pinks and the purples. Look. Isn't it pretty? I think I've got issues. And some of this funky silver with the different sizes and flakes and everything is because that is just really nice. We'll put quite a blop of that in. Oh <laughs> yeah. Looks like the world's worst, strangest cupcake. Now what we're gonna throw in. Gonna have some more of this silver as well. Different sizes, different sparkles. And then back into these little bottles. <laughs> oh. Oh, here's a misspent youth. Mm. Should we have a different blue? Ooh. 
yes. My, my most favourite colour in the world is purple. You know what happens now. What'd you say? I think we should. Be rude not to. I mean, these are galaxy colours, aren't they? There's one in the pack that we've not used, and that's pink. Why not? Just stick, just stick it in there. Right, there we go. Have some of that. Should we stick some yellow in there? Because it'll look like little tiny burning suns for the galaxy. Yeah, we'll stick that in there. And should we have. What's that? What's that? Oh yeah, the white, yeah, because that's always really good for filling in gaps. Stick some of that in there. Okay. Oh, that's a really cool mix. I really don't know if the camera can pick that up well enough. But to see all the different glitters coming through. It's an astounding thing. That's the inside. Shiny, shiny, shiny. You want to make sure when you're doing the glittering that you get as much as you can on the back wall away from the face because obviously that's where you're going to see most of the sparkles coming through. You won't see the ones that are on the face itself. So we have orange ready mix paint. We have purple ready mix paint. And mix the paint to make it a bit smoother, a bit more fluid. I also got this spoon to help stir and drop. I may or may not have got this spoon from a rather excellent coffee chain I frequent a lot. Don't hate me, your spoons are very useful. Just a water paint so I can just mix it with water. Not oh, here. Yeah. That's a better. See, just a better flow consistency. I'm going to put it back over this bit because obviously I scraped the paint off. I don't want it to look like it. Go, a bit. Go, go for it. You can do it. Sud is actually working out pretty well. I'm just hoping that it will dry off okay. So the next step, this is the blue one, or the universe one. Let's paint it all black. Oh yeah. Here it is, painted black. <laughs> oh, it looks really cool like that. But we've got to... Uh, do the galaxy but that needs to really dry so I'm going to leave that to dry overnight now okay now it comes time to start drawing the um, galaxies onto it these are the range of the paints I'm going to use that's going to be for most of the nebulas it's going to be for making the stars and highlights I'm actually worrying that the blue and the purple isn't showing up enough against the black so I'm, th I'm going to mix a little bit of white in with both of them just to give them that bit more of a lift. Mixing some white in definitely works better. So I'm putting down the whitened base first and then putting the darker colours over the top to give it some contrast. I've also given up using sponges, it just wasn't working. Instead I've gone for a really stiff brush. That looks so cool. Yeah. And now it's just a case of spotting it on as you like it. Okay, so here is all the colour coats done. Now I am going to draw on all the different constellations and individual stars everywhere. 
I've got a little mix of yellows for the stars. I'm also going to dot bits of red in as well because of see the different colours of stars. I did toy with a black hole. I think we're going a bit far there. I have painted on some of the basic constellations that I want to show and lined them already. Now I'm going to give it a smuttering of stars all over the place. So the three paints that I had earlier on I've just mixed together with a little bit of extra white and some water as you can see it's fairly fluid. Toothbrush for this next bit. You need a really stiff little brush. Dunk it in. Okay. And then you've got to go like that and it will flicker paint everywhere. You see that? It's worth just having a little bash first, just to get used to it, and then dive in. Oh yeah. I find it best to just give it a little flick first. Let's get rid of the bulk, and then okay. Just be really careful in turn. And you can wear, like I've done that bit there, where you've got like a whole, you know, little gold scale going on that spot just to build it up. I think I'm nearly done. Here comes the fun bit. So where I've been drilled where I've done all the constellations now I have to drill the stars so the light comes through when we light it up on the inside and then just random ones here and there so it all glows I'm going to do it hopefully with a Dremel That is all the constellations I've put on drilled out. It's really cool when you look through the inside. How cool is that? Right, now what I'm going to do is just randomly drill holes of all different sizes all over just to make it pretty. I think I might paint around the holes again with a little bit of yellow once I'm done because where I've gone through I've taken it all off. So I think once I'm done, I'm going to paint with a little yellow and glitter, because glitter. 